Emperor Stefan Uro's sixth Dusan, the Mighty, reigned from 1331 to 1355, left behind a vast and formidable empire upon his death. His son, Stefan Uro's V, the Weak, reigned from 1355 to 1371, however, inherited a realm in tumultuous decline. This period marked the unraveling of central authority, as various principalities gained significant autonomy, leading to the eventual collapse of the Serbian Empire. Uros V struggled to maintain the immense territorial integrity forged by his father. Moreover, he faced daunting challenges from external forces and internal dissension among the nobility. His reign was further destabilized by the inability to counter foreign threats effectively, compounded by the growing independence of noble houses. Ultimately, Uros V passed away childless in December 1371, leaving behind a fractured realm weakened by the devastating loss of Serbian nobles in the Battle of Maritza earlier that year. In the north, Prince Lazar, ruler of the former Moravian Serbia, recognized the looming Ottoman menace and embarked on diplomatic and military initiatives to confront the impending threat. In the subsequent years, the tide momentarily turned against the Ottomans with their defeats at Plaknik in 1386 and Bailika in 1388. However, Murad I, the Ottoman Sultan, swiftly reorganized his forces and redirected his attention towards the heart of the Balkans. In the spring of 1388, Murad I strategically maneuvered his troops from Philippopolis through a circuitous route via Velbuzd and Kratovo, ultimately converging upon the pivotal region of Kosovo. This maneuver allowed the Ottoman forces to position themselves strategically, poised to strike either Prince Lazar's domain or that of Vuk Brankovic. Meanwhile, Prince Lazar mobilized his own forces, likely assembling them near Niche before repositioning to Kosovo upon learning of Murad's movements. Kosovo, with its strategic significance as a crossroads, offered Prince Lazar a favorable terrain to confront the Ottoman threat. By controlling the routes leading to Kosovo, Prince Lazar aimed to limit Murad's options and gain a tactical advantage on the battlefield. However, the details of the ensuing Battle of Kosovo remain shrouded in historical ambiguity. Lacking forced hand accounts and contending with disparate narratives from contemporary sources, historians face significant challenges in reconstructing the precise events, tactics, and military dispositions of this pivotal engagement. Estimates regarding the size of the opposing armies in the Battle of Kosovo vary significantly, reflecting the challenge of historical reconstruction. The Ottoman forces, led by Murad I, are generally believed to have outnumbered Lazar's troops. Some sources suggest Lazar commanded between 12,000 to 20,000 soldiers, while Murad's army may have ranged from 27,000 to 40,000 troops. Ottoman historian Mem Nesri, writing in the 16th century, embellished the size of Lazar's army to around 500,000, likely to aggrandize the Ottoman victory. However, modern historians question the reliability of Ottoman sources, suggesting a more realistic estimate for Lazar's forces. Lazar's army comprised a diverse coalition of Serbian, Bosnian, Albanian, Croatian, Hungarian, and Bulgarian troops. His Serbian contingent included forces from his principality and those under Vuk Brankovic, his son-in-law. Additionally, Bosnian forces under Vlatko Vukovic, sent by King Tvrtko of Bosnia, bolstered Lazar's ranks. Albanian participation was significant, with lords like Teodor Tumuzaka and Dimitar Janama leading contingents, alongside other Albanian aristocrats. The coalition also attracted soldiers from various ethnic backgrounds, such as Czechs, Hungarians, Germans, and Vlachs, although the extent of their involvement remains uncertain. Accounts also mention the presence of crusaders, likely associated with the Knights of Rhodes, under the command of Domini Johann Banu. While the identity of Domini Johann Banu is debated, it's believed to be either John of Polisna or John Horvath. Both armies exhibited a diverse composition, with contemporary Greek sources noting the participation of northern Albanians and others from Himare, Epirus, and the coast. Durad II Balsic has been linked to the Christian coalition in some accounts, but this assertion is largely dismissed due to his status as an Ottoman vassal and his conflicts with Lazar's ally, Tverko I. At the time of the battle, Durad II Balsic was likely situated in Olsinj, undermining claims of his involvement. In summary, while the Battle of Kosovo involved a complex array of forces from various ethnic and geographical backgrounds, uncertainties persist regarding the exact numbers and compositions of both sides. 
The Serbian forces gathered at Kosovo Field, situated approximately three miles northwest of Pristina, to confront the Ottoman army. Prince Lazar assumed command of the Serb center, while Vuk Brankovic led the right flank and Vlatko Vukovic, the Bosnian general, commanded the left, which included foreign contingents. The renowned Serbian cavalry positioned themselves at the forefront, supported by lighter cavalry units armed with bows stationed on the flanks. On the Ottoman side, Murad took charge of the center, with his younger son Bayezid and commander Evernaz overseeing the European troops on the right wing. Yakub, Murad's other son, commanded the Anatolian troops on the left. The wings of the Ottoman formation were reinforced with approximately 1,000 archers, while the elite Genissaries held the central position, bolstered by Murad and his personal cavalry guard standing in reserve behind them. Ottoman accounts assert that Murad also deployed camels at the front lines to intimidate the Serbian cavalry. Notable Ottoman commanders, such as Pasha Yezhit Bey, played pivotal roles in the battle's command structure. The Battle of Kosovo is shrouded in conflicting accounts from both Serbian and Turkish sources, complicating efforts to piece together a coherent narrative of the events. Nonetheless, it is generally believed that the engagement began with Ottoman archers unleashing volleys upon the Serbian cavalry, prompting them to prepare for a counterattack. After organizing into a wedge formation, the Serbian cavalry initially managed to breach the Ottoman left wing, albeit encountering stiffer resistance in the center and on the right flank. The Serbs gained an early advantage with their initial charge, notably weakening the Ottoman wing under the command of Jakub Shelebi. However, as the momentum of the Serbian knights' assault waned, light Ottoman cavalry and infantry launched a fierce counterattack, exploiting the vulnerabilities of the Serbian heavy armor. In the center, Serbian forces temporarily repelled the Ottomans, except for Bayezid's wing, which struggled to fend off the Bosnian troops led by Vlatko Vukovic, inflicting substantial losses on the Ottoman forces. In a decisive turn of events, Bayezid led a ferocious counteroffensive, driving the Serbian forces back and ultimately prevailing later in the day, forcing the Serbian infantry into retreat. Although both flanks initially held, Vukovic's Bosnian contingent eventually gravitated towards the center to compensate for the dwindling Serbian infantry. Historical accounts diverge regarding the actions of Vuk Brankovic, who reportedly fled the battlefield upon realizing the bleak prospects for victory. While some oral traditions accuse Brankovic of betrayal, modern scholars generally regard such claims as unsubstantiated. Following Brankovic's departure, the remaining Bosnian and Serbian forces conceded the field, acknowledging the futility of continuing the fight. A significant moment in the battle's lore is attributed to a Serbian knight, often identified as Miloš Obilic, who purportedly feigned defection to the Ottoman forces. Upon being presented before Sultan Murad, Obilic seized the opportunity to assassinate him with a concealed dagger before being killed by the Sultan's bodyguards. Various versions of this account exist, with discrepancies regarding the circumstances and timing of the assassination. Nonetheless, the Battle of Kosovo stands as a unique event in history, marking the only instance in which an Ottoman Sultan perished on the battlefield. The Battle of Kosovo reverberated across Europe swiftly, with early reports emphasizing the significant event of Sultan Murad I's demise. While the immediate outcome wasn't the primary focus of these initial rumors, they all centered on the Sultan's death. Among the earliest accounts are letters from Tvrtko of Bosnia to the Senate of Troger and the Council of Florence, boasting of his victory over the Ottomans at Kosovo. The response from the Florentines, dated October 20, 1389, confirmed Murad's death during the battle on June 28, St. Vitus Day slash Vidavdin. Although the identity of the assassin wasn't specified, it was noted that one of 12 Serbian noblemen managed to breach the Ottoman lines and fatally wound Murad. Geopolitically, the repercussions were profound. Both the Serbian and Ottoman armies suffered significant losses, with their respective leaders, Lazar and Murad, meeting their ends on the battlefield. Bayezid, Murad's son, emerged as the sole heir to the Ottoman throne after eliminating his brother, Yakub Shelebi. The Serbian forces were severely depleted, leaving the region vulnerable to Hungarian expansion in the north and renewed Ottoman incursions in the south. 
The aftermath saw the Serbian feudal class divided into two factions, one favoring a conciliatory, pro-Ottoman stance to safeguard against Hungarian aggression, and the other advocating for a pro-Hungarian foreign policy, particularly in regions directly threatened by Ottoman encroachment. Some Serbian feudal lords aligned with the Ottomans, forming marriage alliances with the ruling elite. Stefan Lazarevic, Lazar's son, emerged as a key figure, forging a close alliance with Bayezid and contributing troops to subsequent Ottoman campaigns. This alliance eventually led to Lazarevic's expansion of territories, surpassing even those of his father's Nemanjic dynasty. Despite initial successes as an Ottoman vassal, Lazarevic faced challenges after Mem the Conqueror's rise to power. Mem's campaign against Lazarevic and other vassals who supported rival claimants to the throne resulted in the direct annexation of their lands. These campaigns signaled the formal incorporation of Serbia into the Ottoman Empire, culminating in the capture of Smederevo in 1459, marking the end of medieval Serbian statehood. The Kosovo myth holds a prominent place in Serbian folklore and literary tradition, predominantly transmitted through oral epic poetry and Guslar poems. Its mythologization began shortly after the battle and evolved over time through various versions. The philologist Vuk Karadzic played a pivotal role in shaping the myth by collecting and organizing traditional epic poems related to the Battle of Kosovo into what became known as the Kosovo Cycle in the 19th century. This cycle crystallized the myth around three main motifs, sacrifice, betrayal, and heroism, embodied respectively by Prince Lazar's choice of a, a heavenly kingdom, Bovar an earthly kingdom, Vuk Brankovic's alleged desertion, and Miloš Obilic's assassination of Sultan Murad. In Serbian historiography, the battle has been simplified as a clash between Christianity and Islam, although scholars like Majadrag Popovic point out that the political landscape preceding the battle was more nuanced, with the local population in Ottoman Serbia often adopting a Turkophilic stance due to the necessity of adapting to Ottoman rule. However, interpretations of the battle shifted during the 19th century with the rise of Serbian nationalism, and elements of the Kosovo myth became instrumental in the context of the greater Serbia nationalist project. The narratives surrounding the battle gained momentum following the Congress of Berlin in 1878, which blocked Serbian expansion towards Bosnia, redirecting attention and aspirations towards Kosovo. Today, the Battle of Kosovo holds significant importance in Serbian history, tradition, and national identity. It serves as a source of inspiration across various spheres including historical discourse, politics, military strategy, and artistic expression. The day of the battle, Vidavdan, St. Vitus Day, observed on June 28 according to the Julian calendar, has become deeply ingrained in Serb ethnic and national identity. Notable events in Serbian history have coincided with Vidavdan, adding to its symbolism, such as Serbia's declaration of war on the Ottoman Empire in 1876, the signing of a secret alliance with Austria-Hungary in 1881, and the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand of Austria in 1914. The tomb of Sultan Murad in Kosovo Polj holds religious significance for local Muslims, with a monument erected by Sultan Bayezid I becoming the first example of Ottoman architecture in the Kosovo region. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and share it. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you can find details on how to support my channels through PayPal in the description box below.